Hello, hello, ladies, and welcome. Rose Stein here with Rose Stein Coaching, and of course, the founder of the Button of Jeans program and the founder of this amazing free community group. So, yes, today we're going to be talking about, and actually, all month we're talking about hormones. So, if you believe that the reason that you are having trouble maintaining your energy and a healthy weight is because of, I'm just going to add to the list here childbirth. Because uh, you're age 40 or 50 or 60, menopause, terrible job, other people, eating out, mindless eating, abusive relationships, quitting drinking or smoking or any other number of substances, dieting, a diagnosis or two or three, or a physical disability, then these lessons are for you. Today, we're going to be talking about hunger and what it means to be metabolically healthy. I mean, you think about it from like right here to our groin area is like one gigantic digestive metabolic system. And also what I call naturally thin. Now, I know this sounds crazy. This sounds totally crazy. What are you even talking about? But stay with me. Stay with me until the end of this lesson and you will be amazed at just how simple it really is and what we can do today to move in that direction regardless of where you are starting from today. All right, let's do a little quick recap from last week first. So this whole month, of course, is about hormones. And we learned last week that hormones are chemical messengers made up of either amino acids, which are the building blocks for proteins, or fatty acids, which are the building blocks of fats, lipids. Now, they're made inside various organs in our body that then trigger events throughout our body, regulating everything from mood to hunger to appetite, sex drive, cravings, sleep, attitude, stress, perception, energy, blood sugar levels, metabolism, heart rate, blood sugar, growth, development, fat composition, weight gain, weight loss, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a big topic and it is extremely important that we understand what we can do to help our body and to help our system so that we don't have to think about it all the time. We don't want to have to think about so hard what we're going to eat next all the time. So last week we discovered how important our thoughts are to the proper functioning and release of our stress hormone cortisol. When we are stressed out, the cortisol then triggers the immune system to stop triggers digestion to stop, and it says, store the fat in the belly. I think we all know that one pretty well. And we also learn that there are actually four things that we can do every single day that affect our hormones. Because remember, they, there's dozens of them, but they all interplay with each other. So when one of them is all out of whack, then the other ones build up to kind of balance it out and bring that one back down and that one's out of whack and it keeps going like this. So really we want an equilibrium. And of course, other than age and environment, which has an effect on our hormones, everything that you eat, everything that you drink, everything that you think, and everything that you do creates a hormonal response in the body, either favorable to your energy and your vitality and the sustainability of your proper weight, or not so much throwing it out of whack. And finally, we learn that that all or nothing dieting mentality ends up working against us and how to stop self-sabotage by triggering the relaxation response instead of the stress response to release that stubborn belly fat. All right, so that was just a recap from last week. Now let's talk about eating and hunger, specifically ghrelin. Now I am actually going to share my screen so that we can have some fun little pictures here. All right, here's my little slide pictures, cool. So if you're not familiar with leptin, it's certainly familiar with you. Known by various nicknames such as the satiety hormone or the fat hormone, leptin plays a leading role in the daily dietary dramas inside your body. But it's more responsible for overeating and obesity than mere lack of willpower. Let me repeat that. It's not the willpower, it's the hormones. <laughs> okay. So in a healthy, non-obese individual, 
The hormone leptin controls appetite. After you've eaten a meal, this appetite suppressing hormone gets released by adipose tissue. That is your fat cells. So your fat cells release a hormone called leptin and it acts on the hypothalamus it's that's the part of our brain that scans our body for nutrients make sure everything's cool and this kind of regulates so once it tells the brain to produce a feeling of fullness because you have enough stored in your fat cells so then that then suppresses appetite and stops you from overeating it also speeds up your resting metabolism. So that means that you have more energy and you're also burning more calories throughout the day. Not that we wanna go crazy calorie counting, but you begin to see how when things are in proper order, things work very nicely. It's a pretty sensible mechanism. From an evolutionary standpoint of view, since of course it would help to stop members of our species from getting too heavy, too heavy to work or protect the tribe. So this is an, an innate, inside of our body, protective mechanism. So people who gain a little weight, they then become less hungry for a few days and eat less. Then they lose a little weight. And then the cycle continues, healthy as can be. A little bit here, a little bit lost, a little bit gain, a little bit lost, a little bit gain. It's totally, that is the natural, normal functioning of the human body. Now, on the other hand, there were perfectly good reasons, of course, why we might need to store up as much fat as possible on our bodies, this is historically, to get through periods of famine, which we don't really have anymore. For instance, this is why there are also mechanisms including the appetite-stimulating hormone ghrelin, hunger hormone, which acts in the opposite direction from leptin, actively stimulating us to feel hungry. And you can see in this you know, nice little graphic here that when ghrelin is high, there's lots of ghrelin produced by the cells in your gastrointestinal tract, then the leptin is low, and then after you eat, the ghrelin is supposed to go down as the leptin goes up. All things good in the hood. You're hungry before a meal, and you're not hungry after the meal. That's how it should be. However, evolution wasn't so good at predicting the appearance of processed foods. I don't even need to name them. We don't need to talk about them. You know what I'm talking about. The fast foods, the packaged foods, and the boxes, and the bags, and the cans, and the cartons. And this is where the problem starts with leptin. If we continue to eat highly processed foods, the brain doesn't realize we've actually had enough to eat. Such foods, mostly processed with high levels of sugar, trans fats, which sends all kinds of crazy confusing signals throughout the body. And then of course, too much salt with too much is too much of anything is too much, even a good thing, tend to also be high in calories, but really low in nutrients, nutrients like vitamins, minerals, nutrients, enzymes, antioxidants, fiber, water, phytonutrients. This is where we come across the difference between toxic hunger and real hunger. It's called toxic because it can end up causing us to chronically overeat and become obese, resulting in all the nasty associated problems like type two diabetes, heart disease, various cancers. So listen, there are two things going on here. One, processed foods spike insulin. That's another hormone. So now we've been talking about three just today. Right? We're talking about leptin, which is supposed to suppress the appetite, ghrelin, which increases the appetite, and then insulin, which actually blocks the brain from seeing leptin. So when our insulin is high, when we've eaten a whole bunch of packaged and processed and sugary foods, our brain cannot see the leptin and we still feel hungry. We end up overeating. However, the fat cells are still producing the leptin. It's not that they're not being produced. It's totally being produced. What happens is that more of it, the, like the larger the fat cells are, the more leptin is released. So let's go back to this picture real quick. And the abundance of the swollen fat cells produce so much leptin that the hypothalamus in the brain starts to become insensitive 
and eventually resistant to leptin's action. Whoops. So no leptin must mean no fat stores. That's what the brain thinks because it's being blocked by the high insulin. So that must mean that we are starving. The brain says, you better eat now. And that's how someone who is 90 pounds and someone who is 450 pounds, both of those brains are telling them that they are starving. They're, they both have the same diagnosis of malnutrition. So leptin resistance or insensitivity is closely related to type 2 diabetes. By definition, type 2 diabetes is a condition which transitions through a stage where the pancreas is still pumping out plenty of insulin into the bloodstream, but the cells become resistant or insensitive to it. It's similar to how taste buds become insensitive to salt and sugar, how one can become, can develop a tolerance for cigarettes or alcohol, even though the body is silently screaming, no, please stop, I cannot handle this. This is exactly what Dr. Lustig is talking about when he says you cannot fight your physiology. By the way, he'll be here on Thursday for an interview with us, which is beautiful. Now, of course, you can white knuckle a diet for a time. Truly, the human mind can do amazing things when properly motivated and focused. However, most of us cannot fight the battle for long. Eventually, we cave for one reason or another. We end up spiking our insulin with processed foods and drinks, right? Which then that insulin comes in and it blocks the brain from seeing the leptin and allows the ghrelin to take over again while the extra insulin then stores more fat for us. And we're in this vicious cycle. Okay. Oh, good Lord. So what do we do? What do we do? Okay. I definitely do not believe in counting calories, but I do believe that the numbers can give us some interesting information. Plus, this is a really great visual. Ghrelin, our hunger hormone, calms down when we fill our tummy with fresh, alive, vibrant foods with lots of fiber. That's right, fruits and veggies. All right, check. Leptin, the satisfaction hormone, can do its job as long as we are eating fresh, alive, vibrant foods that do not spike our insulin. Okay, fruits and veggies, check. Now you may say, it's too late. My body is all confused. My hormones are all out of whack. I cannot heal. Okay, this, let me, let me, let me um, uh, take off the, the share so that we can get personal here. <laughs> okay, BS. That is a belief system that you can go ahead and squash right now. I have seen it literally thousands of times. Your body can and will heal. You are still alive. Your body knows what to do when you give it the right ingredients. The signaling system can work again. Now, are you gonna be 20 again? No, that is not my promise. <laughs> That I cannot do. I cannot make you 20 years old again. I'm sorry. But you can be the darn healthiest that you can be now. And when we get out of the way, amazing things happen. Again, the conditions, right? The overweight, the tired, the sleepy, the irritated, the on various medications, the hormonal imbalances, all of that stuff are just signs and signals that letting you know the body is just screaming, hey, please stop doing what you're doing. And when we start doing the right thing for it, we get under control of what we're eating, drinking, thinking, and doing, amazing things begin to happen. Your body can heal. And now you know what I mean when I say naturally thin. I'm not talking about a zombie person that just is thin and they just walk around and they're just, they're just thin. I'm talking about metabolically, in balance, healthy, vibrant, and alive. We are not forcing ourselves to eat this or eat that or not eat that or obsessing about what we're going to do when we go to the party or not do or all of that stuff. I'm talking about naturally thin, that happy, healthy, joyous, and free when things are working for you. It's when the hormonal system is working and signaling properly. That's what I mean. I hope you found this valuable and interesting. 
And remember, Dr. Lustig, who literally wrote the book on sugar, is going to be our guest speaker, guest interviewer on Thursday. So that's super exciting. Continue to stay tuned. I love you. You're amazing. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.